So, hello, welcome to this uh, last talk of the day. I know how you're all feeling. It's probably been a very intensive day, but it's okay. I've got a really nice short talk. No maths, no libraries, no new tools. What I'm showing you, you've already got. Um, so just sit back and uh, enjoy. Right. Most of us here, we're developers. We're writing software systems. Um, they all start off nice and well defined, like this little, little blue box on your screen right now. Um, but, or do you know, you know, once somebody gets a nice piece of software, they're going to want more, always more and more, more functionality, more of this, more of that, more endpoints, more everything. So it grows over time. It becomes bigger and bigger, but that's okay. It's still doing what it's supposed to do. It's just doing more of it. Um, but that's not all because there's also always another department and the other department also wants stuff or maybe you want stuff from that other department. And before you know it, you've picked up some extra functionality that doesn't really belong to you, but you're building it anyway and it makes its way into your application. So yeah. It's, we've all been there and of course it's just a temporary solution but uh, let me tell you we all know there is nothing as permanent as a temporary solution so maybe it happens again you get another one so now we've got this nice blue box with this annoying green thing inside and this little even less annoying maybe pink block inside but yeah what do you know you become used to it they become part of the family they're your application now, so you move on and you develop it, you maintain it, you love it. Um, however, the new functionality behaves like the old one. It also grows, it gets bigger. And by now we've lost our nice well-defined blue box. And that's when you come to the painfully obvious conclusion, it should have been a service all along and you need to get it out. Um, so we get it out and we've overlooked one thing. We knew the blue part was using the green part and we knew the green part was using the pink part. What we missed somehow was the pink part using the blue part. Now you can still extract it. You've got a cyclic dependency. That's not necessarily a bad problem, but or a bad thing, but it opens you up to a whole new case or a whole new area of problems. So for example, um, maybe blue asks green for something, but green needs to ask pink and pink needs to ask blue for something. And what will happen if blue needs to ask green again? You're going in cycles. Well, that's a problem you rather not encounter. Maybe they'll be waiting for each other, you're deadlocked, whatever. Um, so if we get into the situation, you get issues, potential issues. And yeah, they're all, they all want the same piece. You, yeah, you'd rather have prevented this. So where did we go wrong? Where could we have spotted this issue? Well, that's one adding the pink block to the situation. So uh, just to make things clear for people knowing our area, this is all a fictive example. Um, I need three rows later on to make a nice uh, diagram. So that's why we have three boxes. Um, uh, we managed to mess up with just two boxes. Um, so next up, we're going to be creating a nice visualization that will show us how we could have spotted this. And this is called the design structure matrix. It's a really old technique. Uh, I think by now it must be 30, 40 years old, maybe. And we simply take our components, the blue, the green, the pink, and we create a table out of that with every color on a row and every color in its own column. And we put them there in a smart way. I will get to that later on. Um, we put them in such a way, at least at the diagonal, always points to the same color. So pink, pink is in the middle, green, green, and blue, blue, they're all on the diagonal. So 
you can't put anything there. Uh, here, the first case where blue depends on green. We're putting an X uh, in the blue row under the green, green column. And then we move on to the rest of the application. So now we've got the pink block. It's inside the green block. So green depends on pink. This is all fine. This is actually the situation we had expected when we started refactoring this and started extracting this service. But we got into an issue when we added this arrow from pink to blue. If we're adding anything to pink here in this table, we're putting it in the top half of the corner. And that's precisely the nice, uh, the nice condition or the nice property of a design structure matrix. If you model your software really nicely, all the dependencies will be beneath the diagonal. That means it will be clear of any cyclic dependencies. And if you take something out, you will immediately spot all the things that you will be taking along out with it. Um, so this is it. Um, this is a tool I wanted to present. Oh, crap, sorry. Of course, <laughs> if you want to prevent this, you need to break or you want to get rid of this dependency. You need to break that dependency. You need to get rid of it. There are many ways you can do that. Um, and I can't tell you how. It's very dependent on your own application. But some things you may try is to simply move some logic from the blue component into the pink component. An other solution may be to introduce messaging uh, that allows you to decouple these things a bit more. Uh, do take care which uh, which of the components defines the message because otherwise you'll end up with another dependency. Um, and if you're unsure about this, just ask your product tech lead. They're really good at this stuff. So, however, I can tell you if you do break that dependency, you'll feel a bit like this. And once you have done that, everything will be good again. And you will scratch yourselves behind the ears and you will think, how, uh, how could I have prevented this? Um, we'll get a bit more into the prevention later on. But for now, as I promised, no big mats, no libraries, no new tools. Everything you need for this, you already have it. It's like two clicks in IntelliJ. If you go to uh, analyze dependency matrix in the menu, you press the toggle cycles button and that's just to make it nicer. It will only highlight some stuff for you. Um, it's still very informative otherwise. And this is what it will show you. Um, this is a real example for one of our services. Um, if you look at the bottom line, the one in blue, you can see the util layer. All of our products probably have a util layer. And you can see ours is being used by almost every component out there or within our own service. And it's not using any of the others. That's why it's at the bottom. And that's the smart ordering in the de design structure matrix. If we put the most highly used components at the bottom, they have the most uh, space to note their dependencies in. And there is no room for anything to be dependent on them, uh, for them to be dependent on anything else. And by that ordering, you get this nice property that alongside the diagonal, which is, you can barely see it in this uh, slide, but it's there. Um, you can see uh, that everything mostly is below it. Um, this is an example where we actually introduced a cycle by design. Um, if you look at the transaction and billing period in yellow and green, you can actually see that uh, a billing period uses transactions and transaction uses billing periods as well. Um, well, I said I can't help you in say, telling you how to solve this thing. I can give you some pointers on where you should solve it. Because if you look at billing period, you can see it's using uh, transactions 55 times, whereas transaction only uses the billing period three times. Well, I can tell you that's because um, it's a one to end relationship and somehow that made it into this dependency graph. So transaction simply says I belong to this billing period and nothing else. Um, 
But if we wanted to be really clean, we could take it out. And um, transaction would be the place to go solve this because then you only have to solve it at three places and not 55. Then again, you may be exactly doing the opposite part um, because you wouldn't need to. It's, it's really hard to say. Um, let's see. I think that is everything. Uh, well, not everything. I still have what I learned. Um, we got into this situation and we didn't didn't want to. I still remember one of my uh, uh, team members saying, hey, Remco, we should create a Maven module for this. And I mentioned, or I said, nah, it's a temporary solution. Just throw it in a package. It'll be out before you know it. Um, yeah, that was a big mistake. Still sorry about that. Um, so put stuff like this in Maven modules. Check the Excel docs. They've got a great page in their documentation about this, and they mostly they refer to uh, uh, package by component architecture by Simon Brown. Do this, do that, and you will not get into this situation uh, because Maven is pretty strict on uh, what is allowed to depend on uh, what, and you are really explicit about it. Really works uh, well. Then another thing. Um, this little utility in uh, IntelliJ, it's not just for spotting problems. It's also really good if you get into a new code base or you have to review some code, uh, like a large change. You can just pop up this little tool and you can really get an overview of what is using what and, and why. Uh, it, I think it also allows you to click into uh, uh, all the usages of something. So it's a really good way to, to uh, get an overview of stuff. Um, of course, I've shown you the IntelliJ one. Um, I didn't get around to it, but um, hopefully I will maybe for next basis summit, but to do this for all services at ball.com. We've got them all in Discover. All the dependencies are there. Um, I just need to extract it, make a nice diagram out of it. And uh, yeah, who knows what we will find. So that's it. 